I'm here at the HS2, Section C1, Central 1, one of the biggest construction sites in Europe at the moment. It's like a pop-up factory in this area where they're making the various parts for the tunnels and it's all happening over here. What are we looking at here? So what you're seeing here are factories. So that's a concrete making plant. So we mix all the ingredients in that plant and we make the concrete, we put it in a mold and then make the segments. I'm going to put you on the spot here because concrete is becoming quite a no-go material because of its sustainability issues. Concrete can be made sustainable. We are making it sustainable. So the biggest ingredient that affects sustainability and environment. Cement. Is cement. Well done, Jenny. We have cement replacement. Also shape what we're making to minimize that. So the use and the size of the concrete is minimum. A bridge is made up of the foundation, which is in the ground, a column, and they're called piers, then what either the road or the railway is going to run on is called the deck. The deck for the Con Valley Viaduct is made of segments. It's like Lego bricks. So you can, what you're looking at looks like Lego bricks. Giant Lego, Lego bricks. bricks. When we finish building the viaduct, we finish building the tunnels, all of this will get taken away and the land restored. What will happen here is chalk grassland. 127 acres of woodland will be created. I'm interested to see where we're heading next because we're just out of the gate really and already we've seen so much of the overview of the site and it's just giant here and there is a real strong push towards sustainability. It's good to note that. Now one third of the way through building this viaduct, it's the longest viaduct in Europe once it's fully constructed. If you look at it, it's actually turning a giant piece of segment right now. Done so gracefully, but yeah, we're talking tons and tons of machinery and concrete there. The special thing about this crane is that it can actually lift two bits and stick them on the sides. Yeah. And it can glue them together to the previous ones. We use some super glue, epoxy glue, to glue them together. Super glue. And then you glue them together, yeah. and then there are holes going all through. What gets threaded through? Once they are glued together, they are, they are maintained with some temporary bars. And then during that time, we are, we are uh, threading inside some steel wires, high, high, uh, high tensile steel wires. Once the steel wires are installed, we can stretch them so they can stick the segments together and it becomes one, one beam, one, one structure. When you talk about steel, you think of something quite rigid, but actually the steel you're using acts almost like an elastic band, exactly. doesn't it? Exactly. It's, uh, it's, uh, one of the things that's really clear about this construction site is that it is surrounded by absolute beauty of nature. And in talking to the engineers, it's really clear that they are very concerned about not just constructing this railway line safely, but also restoring nature back to its original beauty and maybe even enhancing it after the construction of the railway line is done. So we have different types of piers. This one in particular is because so there's two main reasons. So first we're on the lake, so to reduce the amount of piers that we're doing in the lake. Having that shape, that means that we can expand more and doing less piers inside the lake. So that reduces all the logistics and disturbance in the environment. And the second reason is because architecturally we wanted to create like a ricochet, like a skipping rock onto the lake, which is going to create like a beautiful visual once we complete it. There's a lot of effort put into building the piers. Yeah. That's one job. Yeah. And then the launch girder kind of literally bridges the gap. Yes. What is your specific role in all of that? So I make sure that the piers are nice, um, nicely done and built to the design, uh, making sure that the drawings are followed, that the quality is followed, to make sure that it's done also on time before the deck team arrives and start building their segments. Oh, that's where the tunnels are being bored. A boring machine is literally pushing through a whole load of chalk, bringing it out. This is the start of the 16 kilometers of tunnel. They've already dug in through 10 kilometers, but we're right at one end. There's so much engineering here, I don't even know where to start. From multi-purpose vehicles, shuttling in tiles that line the tunnel, men constructing the sonic boom wall. There's been so much in the news about HS2, some good, some bad, but honestly, being here today, 
makes me so excited about the potential of this new railway line. It's going to be cutting people's journey times down by an hour, saving the amount of transportation that is pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere with cars and lorries and all of that. Seeing the engineering that is happening here today reminds you of how advanced technology can be in building something of this size, colossal size. I can't wait to take a ride on the train. When you zoom out and look at the actual whole area that the HS2 is going to cut through, you see that there is grasslands, there are lakes, there's all kinds of beautiful landscapes. This railway line will cut all the way through it, but the amount of work that's being done to ensure that passengers are just gonna have a really beautiful ride as they go through this area of the UK, is pretty incredible.